Hello and welcome to Microsoft Azure, the big picture, and our very first module, Understanding Microsoft Azure. And I'm here to help you understand all the different pieces of Microsoft Azure and how they can help you build solutions and build your business. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter if you've got questions or just want to interact about the course or other things around Azure. As you start thinking about Microsoft Azure, it can be a little daunting. If this is your first foray into cloud computing, you may have a lot of questions, a lot of concerns about all sorts of things from how data is managed or security or how you are going to create and manage solutions. And my goal with this course is really to help take away any of that doubt, any of that concern, and help you understand the cloud, Microsoft Azure's cloud offerings, and how you can use these pieces, these services, to build your solutions and help maintain your business. Now, Gartner has a definition for cloud computing. And essentially, what we're talking about is you using compute and data storage in somebody else's data center so that you don't have to manage hardware. And so you have rapid capabilities to expand your data storage, your computation power, and any other kind of scale which you need without having to invest capital in hardware. When we talk about a cloud, there are a couple different ways that resources or services can be provided in a cloud environment. One is infrastructure as a service or IaaS. This is really where you get provided the bare infrastructure you need to create your own computing environment. Think about virtual machines, hard drive storage space, networking and IP addresses, and those sorts of things. So you can build an environment similar to what you've maybe built in your own data centers or with a hosting provider. There's also platform as a service. And here the idea is to abstract away a lot of the infrastructure and provide you a platform to run your solutions on. With platform as a service, you're generally not managing virtual machines and hardware or infrastructure. You're managing application platform components, instances of web application, for, for example, or a database that's hosted as a service. And finally, there's software as a service. This is an even higher level of abstraction where you're purchasing or subscribing to an application or software. The most common examples are things like email, whether that's Gmail or Microsoft's Exchange in Office 365. But there's also examples today where you might be buying a service that plugs into your solution. That service might do things like manage sending text messages and receiving replies from people or email campaigns. People choose cloud computing for a number of reasons. But one of the big ones is that you get reduced time and cost to provision what you need to build a solution. It's very easy, takes minutes and sometimes seconds to get the platform or the infrastructure that you need created and provisioned. And because you only pay for what you use, it also ends up costing a lot less in almost all cases than if you went out and bought hardware and installed it in your data center. You also get greater flexibility for scale and deployment. There's a variety of different models that we'll see and talk about around how you can deploy your application code. And they come with different trade-offs in terms of the way that you scale the application and the options that you have, as well as the way you package and deploy your applications. So there's a lot of variety, and one of those is pretty much guaranteed to work for you. As I mentioned, you pay for what you use in a cloud computing environment. As opposed to having to pre-buy hardware and software, you pay as you go, and you often pay on a consumption basis. You're storing more data, you're going to pay a little more. You're not actually processing overnight. In a lot of cases, that means you won't be getting charged because you're not using up resources in the data center. So you get a lower overall total cost of ownership with a cloud-based solution. And finally, cloud computing offers new solutions that would be very difficult to do in your own environment. Sometimes that's related to the massive scale that's required and just the sheer cost and work required to build that kind of environment is difficult. 
but there are also benefits to solutions hosted out on the internet or in the cloud that can update and interact in a much more timely manner and that can take advantage of all the other services within the cloud provider as foundational components to create very unique and powerful solutions. As we talk about the cloud and Microsoft Azure, keep it in mind that you've probably got a pretty big investment in your own data center and your own applications and solutions today. And the good news is you don't have to completely reinvest in the cloud. But as you build solutions in the cloud, or as you move solutions from your data center to the cloud, or as you build hybrid solutions, you can connect those two environments. So as you move forward, you'll likely still have applications that run strictly in your data center. You may have some that run strictly in the Azure cloud that are either new solutions or migrated from your data center to take advantage of the cloud platform. And in many cases, you'll have these hybrid solutions where part of the application can really take advantage of a cloud infrastructure. And so you deploy that out to Azure, but you have connections back to your data center to take advantage of the application code, logic, and data that you've already spent time and effort and money building. 